All right, we're gonna get a little bit deeper into the theory behind Hamming code. Not necessarily so that we can just be, I don't know, enlightened, really because we wanna understand what's going on in the hardware and so that we can develop our own Hamming code, or not necessarily our own, but see how to use a, a, a set of steps in order to create a Hamming code for any number of bits that we wish. So, we are gonna talk about something called an error syndrome. Now, before we start talking about this error syndrome, let's talk well, a little bit about the theory. So, from memory, remember whenever we look at memory, we've got bits, two sets of bits. We've got the data, right? And then we've also have these parity bits, these bits that identify what, well, <sighs> They identify if the, pin, if the bits inside of the data have been modified at all. So these bits, well, let's look at the data bits coming out. So we have D0, D1, all the way down to some, I don't know, D sub N minus one, N bits, right? And then we've got the parity bits. We've got P sub zero, P sub one, and all the way down to some P sub M minus one, all right? now. The goal is, and, and how is this actually implemented? The goal is, is to figure out which parity bits don't match up with the group of data bits that we've got now. Now what we do is we take these data bits, the ones that we stored, and we run, through, run them through the same exact parity generator that we use to generate these parity bits. So we once again generate the parity bits. So coming out of this, we should still have our P0, but I'm gonna call this P0 prime to identify it as a calculation after storage as opposed to the ones that were stored with the data bit. So we got P0 prime, P1 prime, PM minus one prime, all right? Now, those bits are compared with these bits. And let me show you exactly how we do that. So we have P0, compare it with P0 prime. They should be the same, right? If the data has not changed at all, these two, and the parity by the way, if the parity hasn't changed at all, they should be the same. So we run these through an exclusive OR. Now remember, if the bits are the same, we expect a zero coming out of there because a zero, a zero exclusive word with zero is zero, one exclusive word with one is zero. And we do the same thing for each one of the parity bits. We run them through, we run P1 through with P1 prime and expect a zero, all the way down to comparing P sub M minus one with P sub M minus one prime into an exclusive OR gate should also be zero. Now, this guy right here is the syndrome. All right, and that is what we are looking at to see what changed. Now, let me give you an idea of exactly how this is supposed to work. First of all, let's assume that nothing happened, no bits changed. If no bits change, then these parity bits should match these parity bits, and the syndrome word we get out is this, all of them, all of them zero. All right, so a syndrome of zero means we had success. We can use the data. We can assume it's not corrupted. But if exactly one, if exactly one, exactly one of these bits of the syndrome word is a one, that is a special case. What that means is that exactly one parity bit got flipped. Why do we say one parity bit rather than a data bit? Well, because in our system, the theory that we're gonna use in order to create these groups that generate the parity, every single data bit is a member of at least two groups, at least two groups. And by being a member of at least two groups, if one of the data bits flips, then at least two bits are gonna be wrong in our syndrome, or at least two of these pairs of compared bits are going to be a mismatch and generate ones. So if I have exactly one one in my syndrome, that means that a parity bit got flipped and the data is okay, but we do need to recalculate the parity bits before storing it. If, however, two bits 
have flipped, that means that one of the data bits has flipped. And we need to figure out which data bits are a member of exactly those two groups. So let's show you with a truth table exactly how we're going to generate this syndrome word. Now, let's go ahead and set up that Venn diagram that we used whenever we were first talking about how to group these four data bits with three parity bits, all right? So I've got my Venn diagram, all right? Now, inside of, th this was considered group zero with parity bit zero. This was considered group one with parity bit one. This was considered group two with parity bit two. And the data bits themselves, we had arranged them so that D zero was <laughs> It got a little small, didn't it? D0 was in this lower, the lower left-hand one. D1 was in the top one. D2 was in the lower right-hand one. And D3 was in the center. Now, what this gave us was a couple of expressions that we could use to calculate the parity bits. For example, P0. Well, P0 was made from the exclusive OR of D0, D1, and D3. So D0 exclusive OR with D1, exclusive OR with D3. All right. P1, this group right here, what we did was we generated it from the data bits that were part of its group, which included D1 exclusive ORD with D2, exclusive ORD with D3. And then the last one, P2, is the exclusive OR of D0, D2, and D3. Now, the thing that was important about this organization of these bits, there were no data bits, no two data bits, that shared the same group membership. All right, D1 is a member of P0 and P1. D0 is a member of P0, P2. D2 is a member of P1 and P2, and D3 is a member of all three groups. All right, so if a bit changed in our data, exactly a, a different pattern would change respect, with respect to whatever uh, group they belong to. All right, so let's take a look at this truth table. So this syndrome word that we're going to be talking about, so I have P0 being compared with P0 prime, and this goes into an exclusive OR gate. And then P1 is being compared with P1 prime, going into its exclusive OR gate, and so on. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to identify the outputs of each one of these syndromes, uh, syndrome or bits with the letter S. So the comparing of P0 with P0 prime is S0. The comparing of P1 with P1 prime, S1. Now, whenever we look at a, at a four-bit Hamming code, we had three parity bits. So there are also going to be three syndrome bits. All right, now three syndrome bits, there are eight possible combinations of ones and zeros for three syndrome bits. All right, and what we're looking at is, remember, a one in the position says that the parity, the old stored parity bit for that bit position doesn't match the new parity bit. Now, if all three parity bits matched, we have no error. All right. If, however, just parity bit zero doesn't match the stored parity bit zero, that means that P zero was the one that flipped. So this is going to be the error bit, the bit that is an error. Okay. If just S one is one and S two and S zero are zero, that means that P one was the one that flipped. And then let's jump over here to the fifth row in the truth table. This one in S2, but zeros in S1 and S0 mean that P2 was the one that flipped. All right. 
So we've taken care of four of the cases. We've taken care of the four cases where there's no error, all the data's cool, and the parity bits are cool. And then the three cases where just the parity bit flipped. But what about the other cases? Well, let's take a look when what D0 affects. When D0 changes, note that D0 is a member of P0 and P2, but it's not a member of P1. So if just D0 flips, P0 and P2 flip, and then the corresponding, uh, the corresponding syndrome that is developed generated from that, in fact, we can go ahead and, and put this last bit for our example down. So this is P2 and P2 prime, and this is S2. So what's going to happen is that this, these two bits in S0 input are going to be different, and these two bits in the S2 are going to be different, and you're going to get 101. So the syndrome word is going to be 101 to identify that D0 has flipped. All right. What if D1 flips? Well, notice that D1 is just a member of P0 and P1. D1 is just a member of those two groups. That means that P0 and P1, when we calculate the new parity bits, those are going to be different. So P0 and P1, there are going to be 1s in S0 and S1, but S2 is going to be a 0. 0, 1, 1, this means that D1 has flipped. All right. If D2 flips, what's D2 a member of? D2 is a member of P1 and P2. Looking down at these expressions right here, D2 is a member of just P1 and P2. That means that the syndrome bits, S1 and S2, are going to be 1s, while S0 is a 0, identifying the fact that P0 did not flip. So this guy right here identifies that D2 is the one that flipped. And then lastly, D3 is a member of all three groups, all three expressions. That means all three of the parity bits are going to flip, which means that we're going to have 1, 1, 1, which means D3 is the one that got changed. Now, what's nice about this truth table, and in fact, this truth table, this is what we're going to be looking at to generate our expressions. You know, this grouping up here that I created, those expressions right here, it just so happened that I was paying attention and made sure that they matched. But what we usually will do is come up with our syndrome words and assign which patterns go with which bits so that I can identify then the expressions. So, what we can do here is we can see that in order to generate the expression for D1, then we need to make sure that D1 is included in S1's expression, or P1's expression, and P0's expression. D0, we know, needs to be a part of S2's expression and S0's expression. D2 needs to be a uh, part of the S2 expression, S1 expression, and D3 needs to be a part of all the expressions, excuse me, the parity expressions. I keep saying S instead of P. Now, if we go down vertically, we can see exactly what the expression is going to be made from. What we say is, for example, for P2, we want to make sure that P2 is the exclusive OR of D0, D2, and D3. Let's look at P2. D0, D2, D3. That works. If we go down the S1 column, we can see that P1 is going to be D1, exclusive ORD with D2, exclusive ORD with D3. D1, D2, D3. Lastly, P0, what we're going to be looking at is the column for S0. So P0 is going to be D1, well, excuse me. Ah, yeah, we flipped back. Yeah, we flipped the order a little bit. Sorry about that. So P0 is going to be D0, exclusive ORD with D1, exclusive ORD with D3, 0, 1, 3. All right. And so that's how we're going. That's a little bit of the theory in order to go to the next level. All right. So we're going to take in the next episode, we're going to use this same theory in order to generate a, a, a Hamming code for four, not four data bits, but eight data bits with four parity bits. All right.